Right, the national security analyst Arash Aramesh joins us now from Los Angeles. Arash, is Washington pleased that the UK has extended its mission to Syria? I didn't get the first part of your question, uh, Kimberly, sorry. Is Washington pleased that uh, Britain has extended its airstrikes into Syria? Indeed, the US, uh, as you know, US uh, British ties and, uh, and sort of their, their uh, very important and deeply rooted alliance goes very, very back. They have uh, been very good and close allies. The United Kingdom was the only major international power uh, that helped the coalition uh, to invade Iraq in 2003. The United Kingdom has also been one of the key allies and partners of these operations against uh, uh, <clears throat> against the Islamic State in Iraq, not in Syria. The vote today to expand uh, United Kingdom, British uh, Royal Air Force operations expanded outside Iraq and going to Syria was definitely welcomed in Washington. Uh, as you know, not long ago after the election of uh, the Liberal Party in Canada, the U.S.-led coalition lost one of its key allies. Justin Trudeau decided to withdraw uh, the very few, but still all Canadian uh, airplanes out of the uh, sort of theater of fighting against ISIS. So this was definitely welcome news. On the other hand, it shows, it signals a great strong case of solidarity between the United States, between France, that was just very recently hurt by terrorist attacks carried out and organized by ISIS in Paris and the United Kingdom. Do you think that these airstrikes are actually going to increase the likelihood of the sort of Paris-style attacks in the West? Not at all. No, I, the, the, the rhetoric used by these terrorist organizations that uh, they are going to target uh, these elements is always going to be there. However, if you allow them to operate freely in what is now, for all practical purposes, a failed state, a good portion of Syria that is not under government control, if you allow elements like ISIS to have access to a large geographical location to, to, to train, to recruit, to organize, and to plan and to operate freely without the constant fear of getting bombed or being under attack or being pursued, I think that would increase the risks of having to face potential terrorist attacks in London or Liverpool or Paris or Lyon or DC or Miami. Uh, let me give you an example. One of the key factors that kept the United States safe after 9-11, we didn't face any major attacks, was that we kept the terrorists on the run, especially in Afghanistan. We took away the territory that the Taliban had provided to the Al-Qaeda for training, recruiting, and operational purposes. When you have their organizational, uh, when they have their leaders and their operatives on the run, they lose this luxury of being able to, to, to be in one location and to operate and to plan and to have the luxury of being in one place. So the, the fact that we can hit their command and control centers, the fact that we can actually hit some of their financial lifeline through uh, these trucks that are being struck now, exporting oil to God knows where, but it seems like they're all going up north towards Turkey. Uh, these are... Uh, elements, these are sort of a combination of factors that will increase the pressure on ISIS and will maintain this pressure on ISIS and will bereft them, it will deprive them of the luxury of being able to operate within in the confines of a geographical zone where they feel safe, where they can call themselves a state and where they can operate and again organize and plan and then carry out terrorist attacks. We have had the lesson of a failed state under the Taliban in Afghanistan, and that lesson was groups like Al-Qaeda found a safe haven, and they were able to operate, and they were able to recruit, organize, plan, and carry out attacks. We should not allow Libya, Syria, or areas that are vitally important to regional security to become failed states. A failed state will allow the fungal-like, the mushroom-like growth of radical organizations. And with that, you will have a very easy uh, environment, a very suitable environment for these organizations to be able to do what I just mentioned. Again, recruiting, planning, organizing, and then attacking. And 
Make no mistake, while these organizations do have regional ambitions, while these Islamist radical organizations like Al-Qaeda, the Nusra Front, chief amongst them the Islamic State of Iraq and Levant, or ISIS, they have regional and local ambitions, it is very clear to me, and I, I, I will, I will you know, make no mistake about this, that given the opportunity, they will be more than happy to attack Western targets as well, because they do view the West as a chief enemy and a chief target. And by the, by, by, by the West, I mean the United States, the European Union countries such as France, Germany, the United Kingdom, Spain, etc., etc. Arash, thank you very much, National Security Analyst Arash Aramesh from Los Angeles there.